Have you ever pondered what Franca Freak and the CFA Frank are, and how they have impacted African nations? These terms may sound foreign and complex, but they carry an immense weight in the history and present of many African countries. Franca Freak, a term coined in the early 60s, refers to the intricate, often shadowy relationship between France and its former African colonies. On the other hand, the CFA franc is a currency used historically in 14 African nations, a relic from their colonial past, tied closely to the French economy. These two entities present fascinating if somewhat controversial aspects of African history and contemporary affairs. They raise questions about colonial legacy, economic independence and political sovereignty. As we delve deeper into these topics, we will unravel their complexities, explore their impacts, and reflect on their implications. By the end of this journey, you will have a comprehensive understanding of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc. To start with, let's delve into the historical context of Franca Freak. This term, a blend of France and Afrique, was coined by Ivory Coast's first president, Félix Upoué Boigny, and has been used to describe France's post-colonial relationship with its former African colonies. Now, let's travel back in time to the mid-20th century. Across Africa nations were shaking off the shackles of colonialism demanding freedom and self-governance. France, like many colonial powers, was faced with a dilemma. How could it retain its influence over these newly independent nations? The answer was Franca Freak. This strategy was a way for France to maintain political, economic and military influence in Africa. It was a clever ploy that allowed France to continue reaping the benefits of Africa's rich resources while presenting an image of benevolent partnership to the world. A key figure in shaping this relationship was Jacques Foucault, Charles de Gaulle's advisor on African affairs. Foucault was the architect of Franc Afrique, the mastermind behind the scenes. His covert operations, secret negotiations and influence peddling shaped France's relations with Africa for decades. Foucault and his network of contacts worked to ensure that African leaders were loyal to France. They provided financial and military support to these leaders, often turning a blind eye to human rights abuses and corruption. In return, France gained access to strategic resources and maintained a sphere of influence in the region. However, this relationship was not without controversy. Critics argue that Franca Freak perpetuated a system of neo-colonialism, allowing France to continue exploiting African resources under the guise of partnership. It also propped up autocratic regimes, hindering democratic development in many African nations. In essence, Franca Freak was more than just a relationship between France and its former colonies. It was a complex web of political, economic and military ties, designed to maintain French dominance in Africa, even as the winds of independence swept across the continent. Thus, Franc Afrique was a neo-colonial strategy designed to maintain French dominance in Africa. Now let's turn our attention to the CFA Franc. The year was 1945 and the world was just beginning to recover from the devastation of the Second World War. Amidst this backdrop, the CFA Franc was established as a common currency for the French colonies in Africa. It was a financial instrument designed to stabilize these economies and tie them more closely to France. The CFA franc was initially linked to the French franc. However, with the introduction of the euro in 1999, the CFA franc was pegged to it instead, at a fixed exchange rate. This change ensured that the economic future of these African countries remained tied to the economic performance of France and by extension, the European Union. But who controls this currency you may wonder? The answer lies in the heart of France. The French Treasury holds half of the foreign exchange reserves of the historically 14 African countries that have used the CFA franc. This arrangement gives France significant control over the monetary policy of these nations, an unprecedented level of power in the world of international finance. This control extends beyond just holding reserves. The French Treasury is also responsible for guaranteeing the convertibility of the CFA franc to the euro. This guarantee, while providing some stability, also puts these African nations at the mercy of France's economic policy decisions. In return for this guarantee and the stability it offers, these African nations are required to deposit a portion of their foreign exchange reserves with the French Treasury. This requirement has been criticized as a form of economic colonialism, with some likening it to a tax levied by France on its former colonies. The CFA franc therefore became a crucial tool in France's economic control over its former colonies. It's a complex issue, one that intertwines the threads of history, economics and politics in a knot that's hard to untangle. But understanding the CFA franc 
is a key step in unraveling the intricate tapestry of Franca Freak. With the foundations laid out we can now delve into the impact of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc on African nations. The economic, political and social repercussions of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc on African countries are profound and complex. Economically these mechanisms have fostered a form of reliance that has been detrimental to the development and progress of these nations. The CFA Franc, pegged to the French Franc and now the Euro, has led to an economic dependence that renders these countries vulnerable to fluctuations in the European economy. This dependence has stifled homegrown economic initiatives and hindered the growth of local industries. Politically, Franc Afrique has also played a significant role in shaping the political landscape of these African nations. France's involvement in the internal affairs of its former colonies has often led to political instability. There have been instances where France has influenced political outcomes to favor regimes that are supportive of its interests, even at the detriment of the local populations. This has resulted in a cycle of political turmoil, corruption, and in some cases, civil unrest. Socially, the effects of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc have been equally devastating. The economic hardships and political instability have led to social unrest, increased poverty levels, and widened the gap between the rich and the poor. Public dissatisfaction with these conditions has often led to protests and social upheaval, placing further strain on these already fragile nations. Furthermore, the legacy of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc has left a psychological imprint on the people of these nations. The feeling of being controlled by a former colonial power has led to a sense of disillusionment and frustration, which has further exacerbated social and political tensions. In essence, the impact of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc has been far-reaching and often detrimental to the development of these nations. The mechanisms of economic dependence, political instability and social unrest, fostered by these systems, have left a lasting mark on the African continent. The effects of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc have been far-reaching and often detrimental to the development of these nations. In our modern world, the relevance and criticisms of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc cannot be ignored. These mechanisms, rooted in the colonial era, continue to shape the socio-economic landscape of the historically 14 African nations that used it, sparking a myriad of debates and criticisms. The CFA Franc, for instance, is often criticized for its perceived role in stifling the economic growth of African countries. Critics argue that the currency, which is pegged to the euro and guaranteed by the French treasury, gives France an undue influence over the monetary policies of the historically 14 African nations that have used it. This arrangement, they say, hampers these nations' ability to manage their own economies and fosters economic dependency. Likewise, Franca Freak, the intricate web of political, economic and military relationships between France and its former African colonies, faces similar criticisms. Detractors contend that these relationships perpetuate a form of neo-colonialism, allowing France to maintain a significant degree of control over these sovereign nations. This, they argue, undermines the political autonomy of these countries and hampers their development. In recent years there have been concerted efforts by African nations to break free from this neo-colonial relationship. In late 2020 for example, the West African Economic and Monetary Union announced plans to replace the CFA franc with a new currency, the ECO. This move, hailed as a significant step towards economic independence however, has been fraught with challenges. There are concerns that the ECO will remain pegged to the euro, and France will retain its role as guarantor, thus perpetuating the same problems that critics associate with the CFA franc. Moreover, efforts to disentangle from Franca Freak have been met with resistance both internally and externally. Internally, entrenched political elites who benefit from the status quo often oppose such moves. Externally, France, which derives significant economic and geopolitical benefits from these relationships, has been accused of undermining these efforts. The struggle for economic independence and sovereignty continues to be a significant challenge for these nations. In conclusion, the history and development of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc have had significant implications for African nations. We've journeyed through the intricate web of political and economic ties that have bound France and its former African colonies in a relationship marked by control, dependency, and at times, exploitation. Unraveling the concept of Franca Freak, we've seen how this complex system has shaped the political landscape of these nations. The introduction of the CFA Franc, a currency that promised stability but forced dependence, 
has played a pivotal role in this narrative. We've delved into the impacts of these constructs, revealing their profound effects on the economies, politics, and societies of these African countries. And we've explored the contemporary relevance and criticisms of Franca Freak and the CFA Franc, acknowledging the voices that call for change. As we reflect on these historical ties, it becomes clear that the journey towards economic independence for these nations is a complex and ongoing struggle. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.